everybody and welcome back to my channel, Bohemian Magic Studios. I'm Justina and today I have a lot of magical mail to open up and share with you guys, some of which I've opened up already and um, so I'm just gonna have to pretend like this is the first time I'm opening it for, for you guys, for the uh, camera's sake. I've ordered some things, I've had some things sent to me, so I really want to share that with you guys. I have a package right here from one of my Instagram followers that I'm so excited to open. This one is is from Linda Lampert of Michigan. So, I'm so excited to open this up. She sent me something in honor of Samhain that I missed. I don't know what it is, but I think it has something to do with her Samhain altar, which I'm really excited to, to see. Another thing that I want to share with you is the new issue of Fairy Magazine! <laughs> Oh my god, you guys. Have you seen the new issue of Fairy Magazine? It is all Practical Magic themed. I actually did kind of like start reading it already. I opened it as soon as I got it because I couldn't contain it any longer. Usually what I'll do with packages when I get them, I'll wait until I'm able to film opening them for you guys, but this I just could not contain my excitement. I ripped this open right away and I just like started to devour it. I'm about halfway through it. I'm just, I'm just super excited about it and I can't wait to share it with you guys and some of you may have purchased it already. I don't to spoil anything but you know I'm just gonna do a flip through for you guys so you can see whether you want to make the purchase or not. I also purchased the Llewellyn Sabbath Essentials Yule book which I can't wait to dive into. I'm going to do a review on this book by itself. It's got a lot of cute stuff in it for the season. I'm gonna get into that in another video but I just wanted to show you guys that I did get the Yule book and I can't wait to start doing all my Yule crafts and recipes and little spells and incantations and stuff for the Yule season. So I'm going to be doing a thing on that. Another thing is my dad got this from work. He saw it and thought of me, so he gave it to me. But it's a cute little, it's not like an, a card that you can open, but it has little witch legs and a cauldron on it, which is really cute. And on the back it says, double, double toil and trouble, fire burning cauldron bubble. So I guess this is a company that he works with. Obviously they spelled cauldron wrong. I'm sure that's intentionally misspelled. There's that, so thank you, Papa, for my little witchy card. I, I really want to frame this or maybe even use it in my Book of Shadows, which might be really cute. It's really good cardstock, too. It's really thick. There's that. Now, I want to open this package that I got from Linda from Michigan from my Instagram page. If you guys want to follow her, her Instagram name is Moments in an Eye. Here's her little handle right here, so if you want to check her out, go follow Linda. She's awesome. She sent me this package, and I'm trying to open it right now. Have a magical life. Oh, that's so cute. I love how she like framed it on this little card. And this is a picture of her Samhain altar. How pretty is that? Look at all of her little potion bottles and her skulls and her pumpkins. And that candelabra is gorgeous. And she's got little tarot cards. There's the hermit and there's a little book of shadows and more tarot cards laced throughout her little altar. The sun card, there's the wheel of fortune. And it's just a little um, picture of her little altar space. That's so cute. I could put this on my altar space. Thank you so much, Linda, for thinking of me and sending me this cute little gift. I really appreciate it and I love this, so have a magical life. Thank you so much for sending me this. Love it. Maybe I'll even put this in my book of shadows or I'll put this on my altar as well. Thank you so much and I will see you on the Instagrams. <laughs> Now, last but certainly not least, this is the reason behind me doing this video. I cannot wait to share this with you guys. It is my fairy magazine, my practical magic issue. Oh God, guys, it's gorgeous. I would have to say my only regret about this specific issue, um, the only downside to it that I can possibly think of is that I wasn't involved in it. I would have loved to submit an article or some kind of thing for this practical magic issue. I'm obsessed with this movie, you guys. Like, I eat sleep breathe practical magic like when I'm feeling bad or down about my day I put this movie on and instantly I'm transported into a realm of magic and uh, I just love it so much and I, I know that some of you guys share the same sentiments about it so I already opened it but I'm gonna pretend that I'm opening it now for you guys so let's open it together <laughs> so here is Love it. And 
And on the cover we have the most magnificent Veronica Varlow. I'm not sure if you guys follow her on Instagram, but I love Veronica. She's also very good friends with Gala Darling, who I also follow. And then there's another woman on this page who she is good friends with. They're both in the burlesque scene, I believe, in New York somewhere. I'm not too familiar with her, but I just followed her on Instagram so I can become more familiar with her. But anyway, let's look at the cover. Fairy Magazine, Celebrating the Extraordinary. Issue number 40, Autumn 2017. And on the bottom, it is the Practical magic issue learn the rules of magic and it came with a little pamphlet they do have a new uh, fairy handbook that is out now it's a big compendium of literature lore arts recipes and projects I plan on putting this on my Christmas list you guys I don't know about you but I can't wait and it came out November 14th so just a couple days ago and you can order it on fairymag.com or wherever books are sold and then inside it also came with a little note card your day is about to become a little more enchanted and inside it says thank you for shopping with us at fairy magazine it's so cute. I love when companies send you like little thank you cards. It makes it that much more of a personal little touch. And here's their uh, URL, fairymag.com. And one thing about this specific issue is that Alice Hoffman was very involved in this issue. There's little short stories. Let's just take a look at the table of contents. Here we go, you guys. So when you open the magazine, there is a little editor's note from Carolyn Turgeon. Let's see all the stuff that is in here. Start with some fiction, poetry, and essays. We have an essay by Alice Hoffman called Sister Witch. We have banishing spells. We have incantations, poetry, photography, fairy knitting, which is another st short story by Alice Hoffman. I read that. It was really cute. Land protection charms, clothing, but you need to cast a spell to rid house of unease, interviews with Charles de Lind, dream of muddy water, making witch bottles with my mother, home fashion beauty, the red shoes, courage tea. If you guys read the new book Rules of Magic, you know that courage tea is a big thing in the book. Recipes inspired by Practical Magic, so there's a few recipes in here that um, I'll show you guys. Autumn Beauty Magic by Elise Marie, Things We Love, Witch Hats, Autumn Leaf Dress, Witchy Glove Pattern, Salem Legend by Lori Cabot, who is a big uh, witch up in Salem, Massachusetts, Witchy's Brew, and this is cute, The Art of Darla Tea Garden. On this side, we have special features. Practical Magic the Movie, Interview with Alice Hoffman herself, Always Conjure Midnight Margaritas, A Checklist for Living Like the Aunts, which I thought was really cute, Floral Fox Art, The Botanical paintings of Amy Rose, Enchantments, which is based on the New York City store. So if you guys read the new Practical Magic prequel by Alice Hoffman, you know that the aunts opened up a shop in New York City's The Village called Enchantments. Well, this shop is based on the real life shop Enchantments in New York City. In this shop, like apparently they have glitter all over the floor and they make you your own personalized spell candles for whatever you want to bring into your life. And they specifically make it a point to say that they do not encourage any kind of negative magic. They are very ethical in what they put out into the world as well. And they also like to ship candles everywhere in the world. Like people from all over the place go to this shop to get their spell candles made and it's become a really big thing for them and would love to do a video about that like I'm in New Jersey I just have to take a train ride in I could go visit the shop so I'm dying to do that and if I do I do have a little video series about all the magical places that I visit and you can see the playlist over here or in the description down below and I would love to do a little vlog on that so hopefully I can get around to doing that soon for you guys maybe after the new year so let's get back to the table of contents so we have the herbs practical magic Pamela Coleman Smith if anybody is familiar with the Rider Waite Tarot, she is the illustrator for the tarot. There's a little story on her. An excerpt from The Wind in His Heart. I didn't read that one yet. An excerpt from The Rules of Magic. I got Rules of Magic on audiobook from my good friend Seika in the Broom Closet. Thank you so much, Seika. I really enjoyed the book. And Seika is also another one who is obsessed with practical magic. And I really hope to collaborate with this girl on something practical magic related in the near future because we're both pretty obsessed. And she's like one of those people that lives really far away. Like she's in California. I'm in New Jersey. If she lived closer, I'm pretty sure we would hang out all the time. You just know those people that you just like click with right away and she's one of those people. So then we have Practical Magic Party Tips, which is really cute. Charles and Dancing Hands. I didn't read that one yet. Reflections Upon the Mirror. I didn't read that one yet. On our cover are Witch Sisters. The Rising of Magic House. This is Veronica Varlow's house. I don't know if anybody follows her on Instagram, but I follow all of her stories and all of her live streams and everything 
page she puts out there and I think every year well I know this past year she did it every year they do like a little witchy retreat and you go and stay at her house and she has like all these things planned it's like witch camp and it looks so cool and I'm dying to do this I couldn't do this past year because of the wedding but like I'm dying to do this at some point in my life because her house is amazing it's like you have to see this place there's pictures of it in this magazine so I'll I'll show you guys in a bit and then there is 40 and maidens call it love and idleness there's things from the readers and there's also a little excerpt on how to make broomsticks so let's dive into the issue so here we just have some of the contributors we have Charles Delin, Alice Hoffman herself the writer of practical magic and the reason behind this whole beautiful magazine George Holtz Steve Park Michelle T Charles Vess and then here's a little ad for a book called the witches of Doyle and I love this it was clear from the start that they were not like other children. Therefore, Susanna felt like she had no choice but to set down rules. No walking in the moonlight, no Ouija boards, no candles, no red shoes, no wearing black, no going shoeless, no amulets, no night blooming flowers, no reading novels about magic, no cats, no crows, and no venturing below 14th Street. Alice Hoffman from The Rules of Magic. So if you guys read the book, The Rules of Magic, it's about the aunts, you know, how they came to be and how Sally and Jillian came to live with the aunts. They don't go too much into Sally and Jillian till the end of the book. I'm not going to ruin anything for you, no spoilers. But if you guys read the book, you know that Susanna is the aunt's mother. And she went to Paris for a while, but then she came back and then she shunned her witch heritage. We have Jet, her real name is Bridget. We have Francis, also known as Franny, in the book. And then they had a brother named Vincent. Then you kind of find out why he wasn't involved in practical magic. The book and the movie. The last time I read the book was years ago, so I don't even remember if Vincent was even mentioned in the book. Tell me down below if you remember that or not. But in the movie, he's not mentioned at all. But one thing that I do want to mention about the book and the movie, there's a little part in the movie where Aunt Frances mentions her poor Ethan. Now, in the book, The Rules of Magic, Franny is involved with a boy, and that boy has a father, and the father's name is Ethan. So I'm trying to figure out if maybe she had a thing going on with the boy's father as well at some point. I don't know, but you guys tell me what you think down below. I don't want to say too much because I don't want to give away any spoilers for those who haven't read the book yet, but if you do read the book, let me know what you think about Ethan and the connection from the Ethan in the book to the Ethan that she mentions in the movie. There was no character Ethan in the movie. She just mentions his name like off the cuff, but like it just made me like put two and two together. I was like, wait, there's an Ethan that she mentions in the movie and then there's an Ethan in the book. So are the two connected? Are they the same person? Let me know what you think. So just a little Easter egg maybe because Alice Hoffman wrote this book way after the movie even came out. I mean, the movie came out like 20 something years ago. Maybe she just threw that in the book just to kind of like play with the fan base a little bit. I don't know, but let me know what you think and I would love to start up a discussion about this and any theories that you have. I'm so obsessed with this, you guys. So anyway, red shoes, the ultimate witch footwear. The sisters in Rules of Magic were not allowed to wear red shoes. They were not allowed to be anything witchy. So now here we go. We have Veronica and Sage. So there's a whole article on Veronica Varlow and her friend Sage and Sage actually she um, she works with a lot of fire because she's she's involved with burlesque shows so she's like a fire master it's pretty cool Varlow says she's an otherworldly goddess when she performs <laughs> so there's these two goddesses playing with fire in the woods and here she is conjuring the water spirits love this beautiful picture and here they are together in fairyland and there's a whole article on that and here's a cute little essay by Alice Hoffman called Sister Witch. And this Sister Witch article is basically about female empowerment and how witches were just like outcast because they never conformed to society. I guess that's why people feared them so much because they owned their power. And I really love this line right here. The witch is not a mother or a daughter or a queen, but she's our sister, a soul sister who resides deep inside each of us. So I really love that. Now on the next page we have Practical Magic, the movie and why we still love it. And I love this article. Here's some more pictures from the movie and then we turn the page and here's some more pictures of them in that gorgeous kitchen and with a beautiful book of shadows and here's an interview with Alice Hoffman herself she tells us a little bit about the new book there's a picture of it right here turn the page here's courage tea this is a little excerpt from the book I love this and she said courage tea is one recipe you have to discover for yourself and that's a big thing in the book some more ads these are so cute these little fairy flip-flops so this
This is a cute story. DIY banishing spell for the noisiest croissant in town. This is a true story. A girl's own personal account of a banishing spell that she tried. She lived in this building that had a bakery attached to it and then the bakery decided they wanted to revamp and like they put in all this loud machinery and then the girl like did this banishing spell. I'm not gonna tell you the outcome of it but it's basically what the outcome was when she did this banishing spell to this bakery that would not cut it out with the noise level in her building. <laughs> And that's really funny because I have my own personal account with a banishing spell that I did when I was a teenager. Maybe I'll do a little story time video on that. Let me know if you guys want to see that down in the comments below. That would be so fun to do. I'm not going to get into it today because it's kind of a long story. So then on the next page we have the art of Darla Tea Garden. Look at this. I think this girl makes these uh, costumes, which is really cute. And she's a photographer and she does a lot of fairy tale themed photography. Like it's just wild stuff. Look, she's a fox here and look, she's right here. He reminds me of Sam from Sabrina the Teenage Witch, doesn't he? He looks kind of like a puppet a little bit. And then on the next page, we have recipes inspired by Practical Magic. These photos are so gorgeous. Look how rich this looks. I would love to try this recipe. Tipsy chocolate cake with raspberry sauce. Franny came in from the garden with a basket of herbs she had just picked. Comfrey mint. She stopped in her tracks when she saw a little girl. Regina looked up at her and smiled. You're the good witch, she said. Franny laughed. She certainly never thought of herself that way. Still, she was charmed. Have you ever heard of tipsy cake, she asked. Regina shook her head no. Why, it's absolutely delicious. It's the most chocolatey chocolate you'll ever taste. I think I'll make you one. Alice Hoffman from The Rules of Magic. So that's so pretty. And here's the um, recipes for the cake. And here's also a recipe for midnight margaritas, which you guys remember in the movie. It's a traditional margarita recipe, but sweetened with a touch of fairy friendly honey syrup, which I think I thought was really cute. But the pictures are just gorgeous. I love these pictures. So then we have Autumn Beauty Magic by Elise Marie. The season of which is upon us. As the last of the harvest festivals draw near, we have a unique opportunity to release the old and embrace the new. What better time for a simple yet powerful beauty ritual? So it basically tells you how to care for your body with all natural remedies, body scrubs and sugars and butters. There's a Harvest Spice body scrub in here. Pumpkin Radiance Mask, which looks yummy. And then that gives you directions for how to apply. So down here we have the fiery spicy body products So these are really great for fall and then here we have a beautiful Segment with poetry by Kim Malinowski and photography by Courtney Brooks So it looks like they collaborated for this segment. This is just all poetry and is called Incantations and this one's about the athame, which is the witch's little knife Here's a thing, a poem about makeup. These pictures are just so beautiful. And here is a poem about the bee song, which is which is broom. Love this picture. And then on this page we have Always Conjure Midnight Margaritas, a checklist for living like the aunts, which is really cute. And it's just basically all of the aunts little ideals. Uh, eat chocolate cake for breakfast, dance under the full moon, clothes entirely optional, cats belong in your home on top of your table or wherever they so please. And it's a bunch of their rules for how to live a magical life. And I love that. That. On the next page we have The Night of the Witch, a fairy tale by Alice Hoffman. This excerpt is a short story written by Alice Hoffman where there are three sisters and then I think two get captured by witch hunters and they're thrown in jail. The last sister that didn't get captured, she had to go save them and the only way she could save them was if she wore these gloves that were made from the night sky and when she cast them out in front of her to find her sisters, they would create a map for, for her to find them. And it's just really creative and I really loved it. So here's an excerpt about fairy knitting with Alice Hoffman and Lisa Hoffman and you can find Lisa's glove pattern on page 105. And I'm not sure if, I guess Lisa is Alice's sister, I'm not sure if they're related. On the next page we have the eccentricities of gentlemen, ephemera and apocrypha from the notes of Timothy Schaefer. And maidens call it love in idleness, stories of perfume, magic, and medicine. So these are just stories throughout history of magic, um, perfumery, and witchery, and all that cool spooky little stuff. There's floral fox art, the botanical paintings of Amy Rose. She does all these beautiful botanical paintings, which would be great to put in like your book of shadows. So then there's Magical Marvelous Broomsticks by Charlotte Baker of Nightshade Handmade. And I believe I've, I've seen this woman on Etsy before because I've actually looked into getting a broomstick because me and my husband did a jumping the broom ceremony for our wedding. I was looking into broomsticks, but I ended up going with an, another cute broom for one of my flower girls instead. But I would really love to buy one of her brooms because look at them. They're just so 
cute. And this is Charlotte Baker who makes the brooms. Also, she tells you how to make one yourself. She gives you materials and tools and the instructions and the technique. And she gives you pictures to show you how to make the brooms as well. And these are a couple more of her brooms. Look, the witch is in. I love this quote. This is my, one of my favorite quotes. And this is about enchantments in New York City. As you know, in the Rules of Magic, Francis and Jet Owens opened their own little witchy herbal shop. And I think that shop in the Rules of Magic was based on the real life enchantment shop in New York City. So like I said, I really want to check that out in person one day. And these are the wonderful spell candles that they make for their patrons. And you can get one custom made and they put your astrological symbol on it and the colors corresponding to the type of spell work you are trying to do. I think this is the store window which is really pretty. A happiness spell and a fairy attraction spell. And here's a little ad for some witch hats. Love this. So stylish. You can get those at lalabugdesigns.etsy.com. Here's kind of where I left off. I left off at the herbs of practical magic. So it just basically tells you some of the herbs used in the rules of magic, the book. And here's a beautiful illustration by Rachel Oaks. You could see some of the herbs written around the sides. This is really pretty. And this would be a really pretty picture to put in your book of shadows. Or if you can draw, you could do something like this in your own book of shadows. Here's some of the pictures of the herbs. I love herbal pictures. So then here's a thing for land protection charm. What you need to cast a spell to rid a house of unease. So there's little spells in here. And here is the divine mystery of Pamela Coleman Smith, who is the illustrator of the Rider Waite Tarot, which is the most universal deck that people use to learn. I learned on the Rider Waite. A lot of people like to teach with the Rider Waite. And it's just a really good deck to start with, I think, if you're gonna planning on learning the tarot. And this is a picture of Pamela Coleman Smith. I did study her a bit when I took my tarot course, and I studied her a bit on my own just to learn a little bit more about the history behind the tarot. I'm not gonna get too into her history today because it's a lot of story to cover and I only have a limited amount of time. But if you wanna learn more about Pamela Coleman Smith, there's a whole article on here about her. Then on the bottom here, there's Carter Haw School of Folklore and Fantastic, which looks really cool. It's very, it looks like little Harry Potter-ish and they have courses open, so you go register here. Um, here it is, The Rising of the Magic House by Veronica Varlow. And this is Veronica Varlow's really cool house. I mean, look at this house. Gorgeous. Like, I want to know who built this house for her. Like, did she design this herself? It, this could be in the um, article. I didn't read this one yet. I'm Like I said, I only got halfway through this magazine so far. But I can't wait to read it. But she has this cute little hobbit door. This is the um, house that you see in all of her Instagram lives. This is where she holds her witchy camp, which I am dying to attend. Look at this staircase. Gorgeous. And the entrance. Ugh. The Hobbit door, it's so cute. It's just so creative. Look at these windows. Oh God. It kind of reminds me of the Pippi Longstocking's house if you guys remember at all. Villa Villa Coola. Some of her witchy wardrobe, her little dog. It's her top five tips for creating a magical house. So if you want a magical house like Veronica Varlow, read her little tips here. So I can't wait to read her tips for creating a magical house because I myself, I am looking for a house at the moment with my husband. And she also talks a lot about her grandma, Helen. There was one excerpt in the magazine that I really loved and re it resonated with me. She got made fun of in grade school a lot and kids were make fun of her hair and stuff. One day her grandmother decided to brush her hair and then she took all the hair from the brush and she put it down on a rock and she said, now wait for the little birds to come and get your hair because little birds will be singing in your hair for the rest of their lives. Because the birds make, you know, their, their nests out of twigs, leaves, hair, whatever they can find. Once she saw that she could sustain life with her hair and it was just like a magical moment for her and it made her realize her own power and she didn't get nearly as bothered by comments and, and nasty people at school anymore and like I just, I thought that was so cute. It's just a really positive message to leave for other young girls. So here's more beautiful furniture and little treasures that she has in her house and then here are some, I guess there's 
some short stories here and illustrations by Charles Best, Tina Magic, Charles DeLint, A Dream of Muddy Water. These are all little short stories. Um, I didn't get this far yet, so I didn't get to read these yet. Here's an excerpt from The Rules of Magic by Alice Hoffman. So if you haven't read the book yet, but you want a little bit of a teaser, you can get this magazine. Um, autumn leaf dress. Oh, there's a tutorial for how to make this fall lady autumn leaf dress. How pretty is that? And I guess you could put it out with your fall decor. Now here are practical magic party tips, which are really cute. I love the picture. And these look like all little apothecary jars that I bought for our wedding that we put a lot of candy. We made a candy bar. We put all candy in little jars like this. Maybe I'll repurpose those candy jars for, you know, my herbs and spices. And this is by Trisha Soroya. And I guess one of these is her. I'm not familiar with her, so I'm going to have to read up on her a little bit more. They just give us some fun little party tips. She gives you tips on how to make the spell book, how to antique paper, more fun pictures of the ladies right here with their little practical magic party. And they're dressed so fancy like the aunts. <laughs> the Alchemy of Women in Poetry. Here's another book ad. Charles Vest and Dancing Hands. That's another article. A Salem Legend by Lori Cabot on turning the witchy city around. So these are her cool, creepy little spooky hands and all of her crystals. And she is just so cool looking. How cool is she? She's pretty badass. She's one of the most badass witches around. She's up in Salem, Massachusetts, and she has her own shop. And if any of you have ever been to Salem, you know that there is a mile long line around the building to get into her shop. I've been in her shop before, but there is a very long line to get in there. There's a whole article on her. I didn't read this one yet. So here are some images, I guess, from her shop and beautiful crystals. The one who owns this magic box may cast a lasting spell, place it in the box, and bury it in a place where it can't be dug up. Salem Haunted Happenings. I sign up for this magazine every single year because once in a while we decide to go, and it's just really helpful in planning your trip. So if you guys are planning on going to Salem, October is definitely the time to go. This is definitely the little magazine pamphlet guide that you want to get because all Salem's happenings are in this guide. This is for October 2017, but the new one for each year doesn't come out till I want to say August September it comes out pretty late and then everybody scrambles at once to get all their stuff booked so it becomes madness so you want to definitely book as soon as possible around August September to get all your stuff lined up making witch bottles with my mother by Kaylee Tedesco and beautiful photography again I think this is poetry a witch's brew from forest to meadow with beauty green witch Holly Witchy. That's her real name, Holly Witchy. That's so awesome. In her upstate storybook home. Yes, that's her. And there's a whole article on her. Oh, I can't wait to read this. Oh, how pretty. She looks so soft and feminine and goddess-like. And I guess that's her in her home. Love her gown here. It's so pretty. There's witchy cider vinegar, rendition of rosemary glad stars, queen of hungry toner from tree to face. So it looks like a toner recipe for for face. Reflections upon the mirror. I don't know what this one is about, but I love the photography. I can't wait to read this one as well. That's Narcissus, right? He fell in love with his reflection. Now on this side, we have Lisa Hoffman's witchy gloves. Those look really warm and cute. And she gives you the glove patterns and the materials that you need and all that other fun stuff. And then at the end, there's an excerpt from their readers. They asked their Facebook readers, what does practical magic mean to them? And this is just all some, some little tidbits added in by the readers. And I love little illustrations all around the page. And here's another ad for Deep Midnight Perfume. Artisan Perfume Oils by Deep Midnight Perfumes at Etsy.com. The last page is their ad for their fairy handbook, which is out now. So go pick up your copy of that or put it on your wish list for the holiday season. So there you have it, you guys. I hope I didn't ramble too much. Um, I just was so excited to share this issue of Fairy Magazine with you guys. And normally I don't subscribe to Fairy Magazine. And there's another magazine that's on my radar called Which Way Magazine. I really want to try to submit more of my own stuff to these magazines. So maybe in the future you'll see some of my material floating around in one of these mags but I don't subscribe to this stuff only because I can't really afford to 
be on a subscription. These magazines are like $11 an issue, but they had me in Practical Magic. I just had to splurge on the Practical Magic issue. So it was like $15 with shipping. If I see an issue that really resonates with me, I will pick it up. Feel free to pick this up yourselves. Go read the Rules of Magic, and hopefully we can form a discussion in the comments down below. And there you have it. Hope you enjoyed this video. Check me out on my Instagram at Bohemia Magic Studios and on my website bohemiamagicstudios.com for more tips and tricks on how to live a magical life. I'm Justina. Thank you so much for visiting me today, you guys, and have a magical and wonderful day. I will see you next time with hopefully another magical recipe. Bye! today's video, please don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. Also, to watch more of my magical reviews and other videos, click the playlist above. I hope to see you back real soon.